Hello, it's Nana here, and I have another story to tell you. I'm here in the studio with all the paintings and the books and all the fun things you can find in a studio, but today is a good day for storytelling. And I'm going to tell you the story of the 12 dancing princesses. It goes like this. Once upon a time, long, long ago, when there was still magic everywhere in the world, there was a king who had 12 daughters. And those daughters lived in a beautiful wing in the palace. And there was a big bedroom with 12 beds in it and 12 closets full of princess clothes and great big windows that let the sun shine in. And they opened up so if the princesses wanted to, they could step out the window and go outside. And once they stepped outside, there was a beautiful garden. And they would play in the garden and they could walk on the paths and they could look at the flowers. And if they walked to the very end of the garden, they came to a lake. And the lake was a very big lake and way, way far off in the distance, in the middle of the lake was, was an island with a mountain on the top. But it was very hard to see. It was so far away. It was kind of hidden in mists. And along the shore of the lake were 12 perfect little rowboats, just right for a princess, all blue and gold and just with soft cushiony seats, just beautiful boats that princesses might want to row around in. Well, they had many teachers to come and teach them how to be proper princesses. Their daddy hired an art teacher to teach them how to paint and draw. And he hired a French teacher to teach them how to speak French and a deportment teacher to teach them how to sit up straight and hold their heads up high like princesses should and wear crowns on their head. And he hired music teachers so that they would be good singers. And he hired a dancing teacher so that they would learn how to dance. He hired every kind of teacher they needed and they became lovely, proper princesses. Except one day they were too tired to get out of bed. And when the king said, where are my daughters? Everybody said, they're still asleep. He said, well, wake them up. They need to come down for breakfast, but they wouldn't wake up for breakfast. And when they finally did wake up for lunch, oh, they were rubbing their eyes and oh, yawning, and they were so tired, and they came down the steps so sleepy, and they sat at lunch and could barely eat, and after lunch they said, Papa, can we go have a nap? And, and he said, well, no, you need to stay awake. You're princesses. You have to be part of the palace. But they fell asleep, and when dinner time came, they could hardly eat their dinner. Do you know they fell asleep before they finished their ice cream? They were so, can you imagine not eating your ice cream? I think I could always stay awake long enough to finish my ice cream, but not these poor princesses. And the father said, girls, what's wrong with you? And they said, Papa, we don't know, but we're so tired. Can we go to bed now? Well, he let them go to bed, of course, but he asked the servants who helped them keep their room tidy and take care of all their clothes and things, would you please stay up all night and watch the princesses and see what's wrong? Maybe they're having bad dreams. Maybe they're having tummy aches. Maybe they're sleepwalking, but would you stay up to see why they don't want to wake up in the morning? So the servant said, yes, of course, your majesty. And they did. And the next morning when the king asked them, he said, well, did you see anything? They all said, I'm sorry, your majesty, we didn't see a thing. So he called in all of his wise men and the wise men came with their big scrolls and their big books and they flipped through the pages and they read everything and they said, I'm sorry, your majesty, we, we can't find anything in our books that would explain this. Maybe we better stay up and watch what they do at night. And the king said, well, okay, it's all right then. And so they, st they went and stayed in the princess's bedroom. But the next morning when the king said, did you see what was going on? Did they have bad dreams or tummy aches? They said, no, Your Majesty, we didn't see a thing. Well, now the king was really worried. And so he sent out a proclamation far and wide. And it said, anyone who can solve the problem of the tired princesses may choose one for a bride. And when I'm gone, he will be the king. And so you can imagine that all kinds of princes came from far and wide and all kinds of rich men sent them their sons from far and wide and even merchants and bakers and millers and blacksmiths and farmers came to see if they could solve the problem of the tired princesses. But guess what? Nobody could. They could never solve that problem. And so the princesses remained very tired and the king 
remained very worried. Well, at about the same time, along came a young soldier marching home from far, far away. And he had a knapsack on his back and he was walking down the road, not too far from the town where the palace was, when he saw a great large boulder that looked just the right place to sit down and have a little lunch. And sitting on the boulder was an old woman. So he walked up to the old woman and he said, how do you do, grandmother? That's a polite thing. That was considered polite back then for a young man to call an old woman that he didn't know grandmother. And she said, why, I'm just fine, son. And that was a polite thing for an old lady to say to a young man who wasn't really her son. And he said, may I join you? And she said, please sit beside me. And he sat down with her and they chatted a while. And he said, you know, I'm quite hungry and I have some lunch in my sack. Would you like to share my lunch with me? And she said, oh, yes, son, I would love that. So he took a jug of water and a big loaf of bread and a big hunk of cheese out of his sack. And the first thing he did was to take the cap off of the jug. And he said, here, grandmother, have the first sip, which was a very polite thing to do. And she said, thank you, and took the first sip. And then he broke that big loaf of bread into two big hunks of bread. And he offered both of them to her and said, Grandmother, have some bread so she could take her pick. And he did the same thing with the cheese. He was very polite. He knew all about how to treat a grandmother just the right way. He had lots of good manners, even though he was a soldier and had been away from home for a long time. And so they ate their lunch and they enjoyed their company. And then when it was getting a little bit later, the young soldier said, you know, I see the sun is starting to go down and I live just up ahead in that big city and I'm going to surprise my family when I finally show up at home. And the old woman said, well, son, you have been so kind and so polite. You've been a true gentleman and I'm going to help you make your fortune. And he said, why, grandmother, how can you help me make my fortune? And she said, well, listen. And she told him the story about the tired princesses and the king's proclamation that anyone who could solve the mystery could marry one of the princesses. And he said, well, I, I'm not very wise. And, and, and I, I, if the wise men and the princes and the rich men and the farmers and, the, and even the servants who've known those princesses all their lives can't solve that problem, I don't think I can. And she said, oh, I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you this. And she gave him a cloak. Now, a cloak is like a great big piece of cloth that you can wrap around yourself. And sometimes it has a, a little spot at the top that you can button so it's like a cape. And she said, when you wear this cloak, you will be invisible and no one will be able to see you. You can go anywhere you want. And I'll give you another hint. Don't let the princesses give you anything to drink or if you let them, don't drink it. Drink nothing that the princesses offer you to drink. Now, good luck, son. And he said, well, thank you, grandmother. And he went on his way. And instead of going straight home, he went straight to the palace and he knocked on the door and the guard let him in. And he told the guard that he had thought he could solve the mystery of the tired princesses. And so he was taken straight to the king. And the king said, well, then I will let you do your best. Many men have tried, but no one has succeeded. And if you succeed, you may choose one for your bride and one day you will be the king after me. So that night, the young soldier was taken up to the princess's bedroom and they had already put their nightgowns on and all but the oldest were already in bed and sleeping. And the oldest one said to him, why, sir, you look very tired. Won't you like to sit in this nice, comfortable chair? It has lots of cushions. And he said, yes, ma'am, thank you, and sat in the cushion. And she pushed a, a footstool up to him and said, maybe you'd like to put your feet on this footstool. It would make you feel so much more rested. And he said, why, yes, ma'am, thank you. And he put his feet up and she said, I bet you're thirsty, let me bring you something. And she brought him a goblet with something in it, something to drink. And she handed it to him and he said, thank you, ma'am. And he pretended to drink it, but he didn't. And when she turned around to go back to her bed, he poured it into the chair so that it, when it, and it was kind of made the chair wet, but he didn't care. He knew not to drink that. And instead he closed his eyes and he pretended to go to sleep. And he pretty soon he heard the sound of people moving around in the room. And then he opened his eyes just a little bit so you could peek through his eyelashes like eyelash curtains. 
and he saw that the princesses had all gotten up and put on their ball gowns and their dancing slippers, and they were actually walking out the windows and down the garden paths. By the time he realized he better get up and follow, so he jumped up and he wrapped up in that cloak of invisibility and followed those princesses. And by the time they got down to the shore, he was just catching up with them. And they got in the boats, and there was a boatman in each one of their princess boats. And the boatmen had started to row those princesses out to the island in the middle of the lake. And the young soldier just had enough time to jump in the last, into the last boat. And that was the boat of the oldest princess. And the boatmen started rowing and he said, oh, what have you got in your pockets tonight? You're as heavy as an old soldier. And she said, well, I haven't gotten anything, but you better hurry and get me over to the palace and into the island as quickly as you can, or I'll be in trouble. So the boatman rowed and rowed and rowed, but he was still the last boat to get to the island. And by the time he got there, all the other princesses were walking up the steps to the top of the island where there was a castle at the top. And lights were on and music was coming out of all the windows. And the oldest princess jumped out of the boat and the young soldier jumped out as quick as he could too. And he began to follow her up the steps. And as he walked up the steps behind her, she thought, I hear steps behind me. But when she looked, she didn't see anything because he had on that invisibility cloak. And they walked across the lawn to the palace and they walked into the palace where there was a big room full of light and there were musicians playing and there were 11 princes and one old man with a black suit on and a very dark, scary looking face. And they were all waiting to take the princesses out onto the dance floor. And there they danced all night long. And the poor princesses were so tired. And the oldest princess who was dancing with the old man with the dark face said, I'm so tired, can't we stop and have a rest? And he said, dance on. So she had to dance on. And the princesses got tireder and tireder. And even the princes got tireder and tireder. And everybody was so tired except the old man with the dark, scary face. And every time someone said, can't we take a rest? He would say, dance on. And he did that until, oh, maybe about five o'clock in the morning when the sun was not up yet, but it was making the sky lighter. And then the music stopped. And the princesses hurried down the steps and they got into the boats and the young soldier, still wrapped up in his cloak of invisibility, hurried after them. And he got in the boat with the oldest princess just in time for, to ride back to shore with them. And the princesses all went back to their room. And by this time they were so tired, they didn't even notice that the young soldier wasn't in the chair. They just crashed into their beds and fell sound asleep. And when it was breakfast time and it was time for the princesses to get up, only the soldier woke up and he said, let them sleep a little longer. I will come down and speak to the king. So he went downstairs to the breakfast parlor where the king was waiting and he said, do you know why my daughters are so tired? And the young soldier said, yes, I do. And he told them all about the boatman and the boat ride and the palace at the top of the mountain in the middle of the lake and the dancing and how the old man wouldn't ever let them take a break. And as he told that story, a big puff of black smoke showed up and there stood the man, old man in the black suit with the dark, scary face. And the king said, why, you are the dancing teacher and you have enchanted my daughters. Banish him forever. And in that moment, that dancing instructor just crumbled into a pile of black dust right there on the floor of the palace. And at that moment, the enchantment was broken. And the princesses woke up and they hurried down the steps and said, Papa, Papa, we feel fine now. And their father told them what the young soldier had found out. And the young soldier said, I would like to choose the oldest princess to be my bride. And so he did. And he said, I would also like for the other handsome princes who are on that island and who I think were enchanted by that evil dancing teacher 
and they didn't mean to be bad or anything bad like that. I think they should marry all the other princesses. And so the king did, agreed with the young soldier and, and sent boats out to the island and brought the enchanted princes home. And it turned out they were all the sons of the kings from the other countries all around. And they had been enchanted and kept in that palace all those years made, and made to dance every night with the 12 dancing princesses. And so the soldier had a beautiful wife who was a very good dancer and got to be king someday. And all the other princesses had nice princes for husbands and everybody lived happily ever after. Well, I hope you liked that story about the 12 dancing princesses. And I thought it would be fun to take some paper and some scissors and see if we can't maybe make some dancing princesses. So let's see, how would you make a dancing princess? And I think a dancing princess, you might start cutting right here. And that would be a princess hand. And it would go up to her shoulder. And then she would have a head that went like this. And the top of her head would have a crown on it. So let's make this a crown. We'll snip here and we'll snip here and we'll snip and we'll flick those little bits out and we'll snip here and we'll snip here and flick those little crown bits out and we'll snip here. And then let's see, the princess is probably looking to her side so we'll make a nose for the princess and uh, a little chin for the princess. And then her neck and her shoulder and another hand. And then we'll make an arm and a waist and a dress and a princess ought to have nice dancing pointing toes that look like that and then another leg for the princess and it will go like that and it will go down this way to make another foot for the princess and then we'll come back up to the bottom of her skirt and we'll take the skirt all the way to the edge of the paper and we will go back up to her waist and then we'll come up here to her shoulder and we'll pick up her arm again this way and we'll come right up to her underarm and let's see if we can't make this look a little bit more like a princess. And we'll go like this and we'll there. Now let's see if this looks like dancing princesses. I think it does. It looks a little bit like some dancing princesses. It's always fun to take a pair of scissors to a piece of paper. Bye bye.